actually a really great time for this video to come out. Lego announced that they are doing a 1989 Batman Batmobile set, which is like over 3,000 pieces and you get a little Batman and Joker and Vicky Vale and that's just literally everything. It's like $250, but guess who's not going to be eating for like a week? This gal! Gothamites, if you're new here, hi. <laughs> I'm London, aka History of the Batman. One of the most well known pieces of Batman's iconography that has continually evolved over the last 80 years is, of course, the Batmobile. It's not just the most recognizable vehicle within the entire DC Universe. Also a powerhouse that rivals any other car literally in popular culture. Similar to my video about giving an 80 year evolution of Batman's bat suit, which if you are interested I will put in the description below. For this video we will highlight an evolution of Batman's handy dandy bat vehicle in comics, TV, film, and video games, all to learn why this aspect of Batman's long, long mythology is a defining aspect of the Cape Crusader's whole narrative. But before we start our engines, why don't you subscribe to this channel and become part of this wonderful Gothamite community? Starting all the way back to the good old days of 1939. At that point, Batman didn't actually have a bat ornate whip <laughs> in his driveway. In his first appearance in 1939's Detective Comics 27, in Bill Finger's story, The Case of the Chemical Syndicate, he drove a red convertible that was modeled after 1936's Cord 810 Cabriolet. Eight issues later in Bill Finger's The Case of the Ruby Idol, which was in Detective Comics issue 35, Batman now drives a blue high-powered roadster. Now Batman's high-powered car would officially be called the Batmobile for the first time in 1941's Detective Comics issue 48. And the next time we really see an update to the Batmobile is in Batman issue number 5. And that red cord is now a two-door blue sedan that has a huge bat-shaped fixture on the grill with equally huge tail fins. Now this is when we are starting to get into the whole bat car. The red cord and the blue sedan were really cute, but no. Now we have to add bat everything to gadgets and the suit and just our lives. So now we are in the territory of everything has a bat on it, so welcome. <laughs> of course, due to Batman's growing popularity in comics, in 1943, Batman, for the first time, hit the big screen in Columbia Pictures' 15 chapter serial, Batman, which starred Lewis Wilson as the Dark Knight. For this film, a 1939 Cadillac Series 75 convertible was used, which didn't have any bat insignia on it, period. Because since we on a budget, which I can always relate to because my life is literally a budget, the way that we differentiated between Bruce Wayne's car and Batman's car, when the top was down, it was Bruce Wayne's luxury car. But when that top was up, it was Batman and Robin's going to the rescue vehicle. All the same car. <laughs> yes, the budget does not reflect the budget of today's DC Marvel films. No, we are rocking with a Cadillac and we just gotta work with what we have, which is completely fine with me. <laughs> going back to comics really briefly, the same year that the 1943 Batman serials came out, the Batmobile for the first time was featured on a Batman comic book cover. And that was 1943's Batman issue 20, which was illustrated by Dick Sprang. And if you can see, I am wearing my all-time favorite Batmobile button that was created by MacGuffin Goods that actually is based off of the Batmobile crashing through that issue of Batman number 20. See? This is it. It's super cute. 
the quality is amazing i always recommend shopping at mcguffin goods for their pens always oh, so so dope so i'll put that in the description if you want to look at this pen or all of the other amazing batman pens that they make literally they drop pens all the time and they are insane if i could buy all of them i would <laughs> now the biggest thing to notice about this dick spraying batmobile on batman number 20 is that for the first time you see red almost racing stripes on the side of the car which would be a very common design piece for the following Batmobiles in the next several decades. But also in the same year that the Batmobile got its debut on a cover, it actually got totaled <laughs> thanks to Batman and Robin fighting the Joker and that was in 1943's Detective Comics issue 71. All this meant was that there was time for a major redesign for the Cape Crusader to make an even bigger and better Batmobile. So while Batman's working on that <laughs> in comics, we see the Batmobile once again on the big screen in the 1949 15 chapter serial titled Batman and Robin, which starred Robert Lorre. Now this car was doomed from the start. <laughs> Not only are we still working with that super, super, super low budget, but the car of choice was a 1939 Mercury convertible that clearly Robert Lorre could not drive. So much so that it crashed on set several times and they had to use six different convertibles for the Batmobile just to finish filming. If that's not some type of omen <laughs> for the film, I don't know what is. But I always appreciate any type of car that wants to call itself a Batmobile. <laughs> Going back to the Batmobile being totaled courtesy of the Joker, in 1950's Detective Comics issue 156, the Batmobile of 1950 debuted and it had a huge overhaul and was literally the high-tech car of the golden age. It was, It had everything. The bat ornate car resembled a 1950s Studebaker and had the length of a Cadillac. And even Batman in the comic claimed that it was 10 years ahead of its time and can accelerate 100 miles per hour in 100 feet and can stop on a dime. But forget all that. I honestly think this is the car of the future because do you know what this Batmobile had? In 1950, in the back seat, there was an entire operational lab that Robin can work in. And in the front, there were TV screens and cameras in order to help them go on patrol. I mean, considering it was the early 50s, that's a pretty high-tech, nifty <laughs> car. A very fun and random fact that I would just like to throw out there because that's what I do. <laughs> In 1952's Batman issue 73, you see for the very first time that Batman's cowl face, whatever you want to call it, is placed on the side of the Batmobile. And after that, you see that insignia on many, many, many different Batmobiles, no matter the creator, the incarnation, everything. A lot of times the Batman symbol, the Batman cowl, whatever you call it, will be on the side of the Batmobile to show that, hey, this is the Batmobile. <laughs> Moving on to the 1960s, which, oh, this is when it all gets so Awesome. During the early 1960s, the Batmobile had very, very slight designs, but it wasn't until 1964 in Batman 164 that the Batmobile got a little bit of a modern upgrade and started to be modeled after the sporty vehicles of the time, from the Chevrolet Corvette to the Porsche 356. Even this car had a built-in phone where the commissioner can call Batman and tell him what's going on in Gotham whenever he wants. But oh, 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 oh. In the 60s, nothing compares to the Batmobile that was created for the live-action TV series Batman starring Adam West, which debuted on January 12th, 1966. But before we even get to the show, custom car icon George Barris was told, hey, we're doing a new Batman show and we would love for you to create a whole new Batmobile for us. And he's like, I accept that challenge, and it indeed was a challenge. Not only did he have only three weeks to build it, but he was given a budget of $250,000 to literally create an entire new car. But he did it. He transformed a 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura into the ultimate, and basically my personal favorite Batmobile. This car had everything. It had a 
had a 429 Ford full race engine. Of course, the front of the car was shaped a little bit like a bat. We gotta keep that. It had bulletproof bat fins, laser beams, and even mounted rockets. And of course, one of my favorite aspects, and literally many people's favorite aspects, is that it does a bat turn, where the car can literally turn a complete 360 degrees if it needs to go the other way. I mean, it is everything. And there's more. It had a Batman fire extinguisher, and of course, the bubble canopy is literally one of my favorite things about the car. Oh, and there's also like a bat scope in the dash. It literally had everything in it and it added to the ridiculousness and the campiness of the actual TV show to have this one car in live action have all of these crazy gadgets and functions. There was nothing like it at the time. Well, I'm sure there was, but there was nothing like it for Batman at the time, I suppose. Because of this, it was very safe to say that the Batmobile became just as popular as the dynamic duo themselves, and it was all encompassed in what is called Batmania. And it wasn't just toys and merchandise and t-shirts and all these things made up all surrounding the Batmobile, but the design that Barris made for this particular car transferred over to comics during the late 60s. While the color scheme within the comics didn't exactly match the black car with the red stripes on the side, the blue and black aesthetic of the vehicle made it go back to its original Batmobile roots of the Golden Age. And even though in 1968, 1966's Batman was canceled after three seasons, the Batmobile was still popular and alive and well, especially in 1968's animated TV show that was created by Filmation that was under the Batman Superman Hour, but it was a 12 minute segment and it was called The Adventures of Batman, which of course featured the Batmobile. While this Batmobile had very few designs from the Lincoln Futura of the live action series, it did have crazy abilities such as a parachute that shoots out of the car to even being able to hover in the sky. <laughs> and even though it was a little ridiculous, this animated Batmobile set the tone for other animated Bat vehicles that we would see in the future. Now we are moving into the Bronze Age aka the 1970s which is one of my favorite eras of Batman's entire history. The DC editors and the creators wanted to steer Batman away from the very campiness that was portrayed on the TV show and bring him back to his dark gothic roots that was planted in 1939 and the 1940s. This change actually meant a huge change in Bruce Wayne's lifestyle within the comic book universe. Especially after a hundred years later, Dick Grayson decides, I need to go to college. And he attends Hudson University and moves out of Wayne Manor. Which of course all happens in Batman issue 217. And because of this, Bruce and Alfred Pennyworth kind of wanted to be hip and go with the mod style of the time and they decided well if Dick Grayson's gonna move out so are we and they literally move out of Wayne Manor and move into the Wayne Enterprises penthouse well into the early 1980s. But with this new lifestyle change came a new Batmobile that was illustrated by Irv Novick and Neil Adams and ooh she was a very sporty Chevrolet Corvette let me tell you. <laughs> so while Bruce was being super sporty in comics at this time, in September of 1973, Bruce Wayne's Batman actually went back to the animated screen and joined other members of the Justice League in the iconic cartoon Super Friends. And of course the Batmobile in the show was modeled after George Barris's Lincoln Futura that was created for the 1966 series. Sure, the exterior of the car was blue, which is the color scheme that we always love to play with when we're talking about Batman. On the side of the car was a bright yellow Batman emblem, which we mentioned earlier that debuted many, many decades prior. So I'm telling you, everything influences everything. <laughs> but as we move along in the 1970s, in Marshall Rogers and Steve Englehart's Strange Apparitions, Bruce Wayne still had a very sporty vehicle until literally Maxi Zeus and his gang blow it up <laughs> and destroy it in 1979's Detective Comics 486. So now we're just 
up a creek without a paddle. But it's totally fine because obviously Batman can't just not have a Batmobile for a while. And as we enter the early 1980s, Dean Colan and Klaus Janssen created him a brand new Batmobile. It's in Batman issue 344. Now I kind of liked this Batmobile because it was a little bit low key but really like luxurious which kind of matched Bruce Wayne's appeal as a millionaire, playboy, philanthropist, not well guy. <laughs> he was driving a Rolls Royce fam that can transfer into the Batmobile whenever he needed. So it just cut off the whole, oh, we need two cars. One for his like daily activities and another one while he's fighting crime. No, no, no. It's all in the same car. That efficiency is like everything to me. <laughs> Through a large part of the 1980s in regular comics, mainstream continuity, Batman was rolling literally with that Rolls Royce. But if we look at other alternate timelines, such as 1986's Batman The Dark Knight Returns, which was written by Frank Miller and illustrated by Miller, Klaus Janssen, and Laverley, Batman was driving a tank. This retired, unretired, old seasoned Bruce Wayne who wants to go out there and be Batman again is literally driving a military tank that has all of the bells, whistles, and weapons that you could think that a military tank would have. And while that alternate Batmobile is very fun, going back to mainstream continuity, the late but forever great Norm Brayfogle actually made Bruce Wayne a new, more sleeker Batmobile that debuted in 1988's Detective Comics 591 and 592. The car's very aerodynamic design featured a bulletproof exterior, which Love that. That has all the typical tech that you would find in the cockpit. Just combine all the Batmobiles we've discussed and it's probably in that console. <laughs> Between that and having a bat-shaped ornate ram on the front of the car, Batman can drive through rain, sleet, and snow with ease and not get tripped up, which isn't that always the goal? <laughs> now before we continue on, I just want to randomly say that one of my favorite designs of the Batmobile actually comes in Alan Moore and Brian Boland's Batman the Killing Joke because it is such a 50s style muscle car, huge exaggerated bat shaped ornate grill and it's like purple and has hues of black and I just love it so much. That's probably one of my favorite designs of the Batmobile just in general. And even though in the 80s many people have created wonderful Batmobile designs from Klaus Janssen to Norm Brayfogle to even Brian Boland. No, no, no. 1989, that was the year. Because you know what happened in 1989? 30 years ago? <laughs> oh, you guessed it. It was Anton first Batmobile which debuted in Tim Burton's 1989 live action film Batman, which of course starred Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Inspired by the Pulp Fiction style world of the 1930s, designer Anton First not only brought the world of Gotham City to life within this aesthetic, but that also had to apply to the Batmobile, which it perfectly did. <laughs> Sleek in design and was made with two Chevrolet Impalas literally pieced together. That Batmobile had a Chevy V8 powered engine and can go up to 300 miles per hour. The Batmobile had armored plates and it even had grappling hooks that could come out to assure that it could make sharp sudden turns. And I mean it had all the toys right? It had a CD recorder, a diagnosis system, and tons Tons and tons of weaponry. From machine guns to bombs. But if you were looking for a bat shaped ornament that was supposed to be on the front, no, no, no. We replaced that with jet turbines because that's what we gotta do. <laughs> with all of these features, it made it the perfect Batmobile for this darker dark night that was put on the screen. And of course, you can argue that the 1989 Batmobile and the 66 Batmobile are two of the most well-known Batmobiles, period. Even if you're not a Batman fan, you either know the 66 Batmobile or you know the 1989 Batmobile, even if you haven't even read, seen anything. It's just part of popular culture by itself, which 
is very impressive. Going on into the 1990s, after Tim Burton's film, the Batmobile became its own celebrity, especially since in 1992, Tim Burton's sequel Batman film, Batman Returns, was released, which had Michael Keaton reprising his role, but also had the very, very sick Batmobile. And this particular Batmobile actually greatly influenced the design of Batman's car in comics such as Batman and in Detective Comics. And of course, one of the biggest inspirations that fans like myself love is that it influenced the 1992 Batmobile and the animated show Batman the Animated Series, which was the Kickstarter to the entire DC animated universe that we all know and love. But not everything was solely influenced on Anton versus Batmobile. We had other comics, especially intercompany crossovers and Elseworlds, that had their own visions of what Batman's ride was going to look like. From 1991's Batman Judge Dredd series, to even Batman vs. Predator. Probably within the early 90s, the BTAS Batmobile reigned supreme. Designer Shane Poindexter wanted to bring the dark deco that enveloped Batman the Animated Series into this one ride. He didn't just look at Tim Burton's iconic Batmobile, but this animated Batmobile wanted to have a much more minimalistic feel to it, from its long body and fins to even a very blunt facade. And of course the Batmobile's internal features had tons of nice toys, right? There's a tear gas dispenser and a missile rack, which Sure. <laughs> so while the Batmobile was just all the rage on the small screen and having its own different designs within comics, during one of the hardest times in Batman's entire comic book life, which was in Batman Nightfall when the villain Bane broke Bruce Wayne's back and he had to actually leave the mantle to heal, once Bruce Wayne gave the mantle to John Paul Valley, who turned everything into a much darker, lethal, more violent, Batman and became Osrio Batman, not only was his bat suit changed, but his ride was as well. But don't worry, Bruce finally got the mantle back from in Batman Shadow of the Bat issue 30, I believe, because we just want to erase the whole Osriel being Batman and literally just making a mess of things from our memory. So just forget that Batmobile. Just forget all that. <laughs> of course, the Batmobile continues to be reimagined by artists such as Kelly Jones, who is one of my favorites. But then we go back to the big screen and we see the Batmobile come to life again. In particular, in 1995's film Batman Forever, which was directed by Joel Schumacher. Since this film had a more lighter and brighter aesthetic, that was totally not the same vibe as the Tim Burton films prior, which of course was all to appeal to a bigger demographic because studios weren't happy, you know the spiel. <laughs> because of this, designer Barbara Ling wanted to keep the same brightness to the Batmobile with having light, bright hues, which were glowing under the wheels and even the exterior panels of the car itself. Schumacher's last Batmobile that he did was in 1997's Batman and Robin, which obviously we know was to fans and critics alike a huge flop. However, the Batmobile was pretty cool. But because this film is literally an homage to the 1966 Batman TV show and culture, we have super exaggerated fins, an array of bright colors of reds and orange and blues and even some yellows, which all of course underlined the racing wheels and the panels similar to the 1995 Batmobile. It had a Chevy 350ZZ3 engine and still had all the bells whistles and weapons that many of the other Batmobiles had. So I know the film gets a lot of crap. I completely understand. But the Batmobile, like I said, pretty dope. We are entering the 2000s now. So if you are still here and watching, hi, thanks so much. I know this video is long, but this is the best way I can give some type of solid evolution retrospect. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Let's just keep going. <laughs> so entering the 2000s, the Batmobile actually got another redesign and you first see that in Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee's arc Batman Hush. You actually see two different Batmobiles in this series. One had a voice control system, jet engine, and of course a bulletproof exterior, which I think at this point all Batmobiles should have a bulletproof exterior. <laughs> 
Like, why wouldn't you? And the second Batmobile is closer to my heart because it has a very classic 1950s, 1960s aesthetic. It is very muscle car-like. It has a big bat ornate shape on the front and I just love it. <laughs> I am an old soul at heart, especially when it comes to the Caped Crusader. <laughs> but moving out of comics just for a second, in 2004, a brand new Batman-centric animated TV show aired called The Batman that was outside of the DC animated universe. And because this is a new series, the entire show was redesigned by Japanese-American concept artist Jeff Matsuda. And ooh, Matsuda's smooth redesign not only appealed to the more adult audience, but it was also a perfect balance for the younger audience as well. Of course, this sleek design was applied to the Batmobile and was all kind of influenced by Tim Burton's Batmobile in the films and all of the Batmobiles that appeared during the 1990s in comics and on TV. Now, if we trickle back to comics, between the mid-2000s and the kind of late 2000s, several different designers working on different books, whether it's Batman, Detective Comics, Shadow of the Bat, Gotham Knights, all of these different Batman-centric stories, which the mid-2000s was just king of having tons and tons of Bat-centric publications all at once. We saw several cars modeled after a Dodge Viper and even going back to the 1950s muscle car. But of course, out of this era comes probably the most popular non-Batmobile to exist, and that was in 2005's film Batman Begins, which was directed by Christopher Nolan, and it starred Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. And of course, this Batmobile is called the Tumbler, which is not a Batmobile. It is a freaking military tank. And this thing was a literal beast. I understand why people love it. This thing can drive through concrete walls. It's powered by a 500 HP Chevy 350 V8. There's flanking machine guns and there's even a way where if you are being attacked, you can literally sink into the tumbler to protect yourself. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> and the creativity of envisioning what Batman's actual Batmobile is going to be like wasn't just in films and not just in comics, even in the video game and animated universes. Of course, one of my favorite Batmobiles, period, is from 2008's Lego Batman the Video Game, where it's built just like Anton First's 1989 Batmobile. Like, it's it's undeniable, but it's so much fun. And also another favorite that came out the same year is in the animated TV show Batman the Brave and the Bold because yes, you guessed it, there's all the 1950s, 1960s feels of that muscle car, bat-shaped everything Batmobile that is just crazy exaggerated and I love it. We have the red and black color scheme, we have the bubble canopy, it's literally the Batman 66 mobile in animation and a little bit on steroids. It's so much fun. But of course, the Batmobile gets another redesign and it's probably one of the most celebrated Batmobiles, period. And that is actually within the video game world. Starting in 2009's Batman Arkham Asylum, which is the first video game in the franchise Batman Arkham. Let me tell you that Batmobile is straight fire. <laughs> Not just in design, but just what it can do, and I just always love that Batmobile. Designed by Carlos Danda, who designed literally the entire game and is a god. The Batmobile was definitely a mixture between the 1989 Batmobile from the Tim Burton films and 1992's Batman the Animated Series. If you put those together, you basically got the Arkham Asylum Batmobile. Now, while in this 2009 game you cannot drive the Batmobile yourself as a player, yet, <laughs> the Batmobile does help Batman through some tough situations while roaming Arkham Asylum, from fighting off Joker's henchmen to even defeating the villain Bane, which I love that scene where literally he asks the Batmobile to drive Bane like off the dock. It's just great. <laughs> I know we're going a lot of back and forth, but trying to do a timeline here can be a little bit iffy, so I'm sorry. But of course, during this time, 2009 Arkham Asylum is like changing the way that Batman video games are created and played and loved, we have to go back to comics because during this era, 
Bruce Wayne is not Batman anymore. He apparently died at the hands of Darkseid in the arc Final Crisis and Dick Grayson for a pretty good chunk of time is actually our new Caped Crusader with Damian Wayne as his new Robin. And even Dick Grayson gets a new whip in Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin art. Thanks to Damian because he saw a plan that his father created for a Batmobile that can literally fly. <laughs> but Bruce Wayne never created so what did they do? They made it and they had a flying Batmobile for just a little bit until it literally got destroyed not too long later. <laughs> but while we're looking at the future of flying cars and mainstream continuity in alternate universes, once again my favorite guilty pleasure of all time, All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder by Frank Miller and Jim Lee showed several different types of Batmobiles, which I appreciate. <laughs> this 10 issue arc, you see one very sporty vehicle that Batman uses to go pick up Dick Grayson after his parents died at Haley's circus and then starts to berate him in the car. You know, that scene. And then we also have another Lamborghini type car that can not only fly but it can submerge into water and literally become a submarine. And that literally epitomizes how extreme and crazy the entire arc of All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder is. That Lamborghini flying diving car that just if that doesn't show you, I don't know what does. <laughs> now we are going into the New 52, into our more modern era. And best believe there are different Batmobiles across all different types of media that we have to briefly cover before we wrap up this very long and extensive look at Batman's Batmobile history. So if you don't know, the New 52, I suppose, was DC Comics' very soft reboot of their comic book universe that happened in late 2011. And in different Batman books, we actually see different types of Batmobiles. Batman just isn't riding one particular car. We see a new Batmobile and even a new Batsuit in Batman The Return. We briefly see a very sleek Batmobile that chases Joker in Detective Comics issue number one. And of course, one of my favorites from the beginning of the New 52 in Batman issue number one, this is all volume two because it started over. You get it. Greg Capullo illustrates the Batcave and shows just so many different <laughs> Batmobiles. Some that we've talked about in this video and others that are brand new designs. It's a perfect panel because it really calls back to all of the many, many different evolutions that this particular aspect of Batman's history has gone through. and. It's stunning. It's amazing. I mean, even Dick Grayson's flying Batmobile is seen in this panel. They, I love it. Mwah. Just perfect. And the same can be continually said about all the other Batmobiles that we see in later years, such as Batman the Dark Knight, Batman and Robin, and Batman Incorporated. But then, if we're going a few years later to 2015, the finale game within the Batman Arkham video game franchise called Arkham Knight gave you, the player, for the first time the ability to actually drive the Batmobile in the game and you're solving missions and you're just driving around Gotham while Scarecrow is threatening to, you know, kill everybody and everything and get the Batman and yeah, all, all of that good stuff. And then of course there's the Arkham Knight there with his own people and there's drama but you get to drive the Batmobile. And I know that a lot of people said, oh, that's so much overkill. Like there's so many missions with the Batmobile and it's always there and blah, blah, blah. No. Take that away because it is so much fun. You can hop into the Bulletproof Batmobile, which is equipped with missiles. It has the ability to rotate, jump, and it can even crash through large objects, kind of like the Tumblr. I mean, if you think about it, the Arkham Knight Batmobile is very, very similar to the Tumblr, but still has a kind of sleekness that you actually see in the 2016 Batmobile in Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which is the next Batmobile that you're going to talk about and use that to kind of round out 
all of this. I was so happy that finally in the last game we were able to drive the Batmobile ourselves. But yes, going back to Zack Snyder's DCEU film Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which came out in 2016, a whole new Batmobile was created for this new live action film. Funny enough, this Batmobile of course was inspired by Anton First Batmobile from 1989's Batman. However, designer Patrick Totopoulos wanted to really show the darkness that this extended universe was trying to portray in this one car. And I appreciate that. <laughs> the car was literally 7,000 pounds very low to the ground. And even though it was a large car, it had a sleekness to it. From the fins to the door, it was just a really smooth ride, I think. And of course, there was tons of weaponry and armor. I mean, bulletproof, all of that good stuff. Of course, in 2017's Justice League, the Batmobile had a few modifications, but still the basic foundation of the Batmobile existed. And it was a really sick, modern vehicle. I suppose the best way to round out to this video is to talk a little bit about DC Rebirth. There have been different interpretations of the Batmobile in several of the Batman-centric publications, especially starting with Tom King's I Am Batman. You get to see a brand new designed Batmobile. Yes, Batmobile will be there no matter what's going on. When Tom King leaves the book, the Batmobile will still be there. When James Tinney and the Fourth and that crew start in January 2020, I'm sure they're going to design a new Batmobile. And whenever we get to see Robert Pattinson's Batmobile, Batsuit, everything for Matt Reeves, 2021 film, The Batman, I am just so excited to see what they are going to envision. Well, this video was long, I know, I'm sorry, but I could not, and the thing is I have been planning this video for a really long time because I didn't want to really half-ass it. I wanted to try to go through every decade to talk to you guys about the most highlighted versions of the Batmobile and how each has evolved because they all have evolved. They've all influenced each other, evolved, and have created a lot of times something brand new that the Batman reader, watcher, player, whatever has seen and I think that is amazing. One of the reasons why Batman's mythology, history, everything is one of my favorites to discuss because everything is changing. Even after 80 years it's not stale. It's just not. And the Batmobile is part of pop culture. Even if you don't know Batman, you know the Batmobile. Will I ever own the Batmobile? No. But I have seen many of them in person and they are quite a sight to see. And it is just not only a technological feat, but, it, but also an amazing part of what defines this character and his extraordinary life within the DC Universe. And how can you not love that? Thank you guys so much for watching this very comprehensive 80 year evolution of Batman's Batmobile. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a bat, a bat, a bat, thumbs up. As always, all of my social media is linked in the description below, including Instagram at History of the Batman. So why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out my videos for DC Comics DC Fans channel. If you haven't seen my Los Angeles Comic Con panels, especially the main stage panels, I have them all on my channel and I will link them in the description below if you are interested in that. And also, I wanted to thank every single person who entered the World's Finest The Collection Batman 8th Anniversary Giveaway in our next video, which should be going up within the next few days, if not very, very early next week. I will be announcing in that video and across my social media who is the randomly selected lucky winner of the Batman 80th Mystery Box and also a couple few surprises that I have for you guys. So yes, thank you so much to everyone who entered. Oh, and last thing, please subscribe to this channel so you become a part of this Batman community. It would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will have more History of the Batman soon right here on YouTube. Remember Gothamites, all about peace, love, and Batman. Bye.